and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Is It Land Destruction. That's right, we're going to be kicking off our first deck of the day here with some Land Destruction. It has been too long since I have played a haphazard Bidbarman list. This is a really fun card to play. Really like this six man enchantment. <clears throat> so how this works is it enters the battlefield. You choose four non-enchantment permanents, which that's a bummer. There's a lot of times you want to choose enchantments. But you basically choose four other permanents that you don't control, and you put a counter on them. A lot of times you're going to be just choosing lands. You just choose four lands that your opponent controls. And then at your end step, uh, you destroy one of those lands at random. It only works if you have two or more permanents still that have those counters on them. So like once you have once you get down to one permanent with a counter, then it doesn't work anymore. But the, the counters still stay on. And if you play another haphazard bombardment, then you can, you know, then you have another permanent with the aim counter on it and everything. And it's a fun card to play. It really is. So that's what we're going to be playing here. We're going to be playing a land destruction deck built around, you know, our most important card is probably Star of Extinction. You know, I think this is just a card that I think is really good these days with a lot of Nissas and, and the Scape Shift decks and everything really like Star of Extinction. The problem is, is stay, the problem for our deck is going to be staying alive long enough to get to Star of Extinction. That's going to be the problem for our deck, to be honest. Um, we have Treasure Map to help ramp us into Star of Extinction, as Kanta kind of does as well. Like whenever as Kanta flips, it helps that as well. Uh, we got Drawn from Dreams here, which helps us hit our land drops and find Star of Extinction. You know, digs really deep. Like we can be choosing like a land and a star. Um, we got that going on for us. And you can see I got this Crucible Worlds in here, and that's because I have some Lotus Fields. So I originally started this deck with, I was going to be playing Blood Suns in the main deck, because Blood Sun Lotus Field is a pretty nice combo, because you just don't, you don't sacrifice any lands, and it just comes into play untapped, because, you know, it doesn't have any of those other abilities. It loses Hexproof, though, but it's just a land that would just add three mana of any color with uh, Blood Sun. And so, like, that was, like, my plan, and... Uh, then I realized, wait a minute, my treasure map, and my search for Kanta, like they're not going to be doing anything whenever they flip. So that's not going to work. So I went away from Blood Sun and so then added Field of Ruins in here and a Memorial to War because I didn't have those in because I had the Blood Sun. So I was like, well, I'm not going to have those those lands. But instead, we're going to go with those with Crucible. So if we sacrifice two lands to Lotus Field, we can play them again with Crucible. You know, we can get like Field of Ruin. Crucible combo, or even better, in the really late game, we got Memorial to War Crucible combo. Um, is Kefnet my only win con? No. Uh, besides Kefnet, we got Fight with Fire that deals 10 damage to the opponent. And we have Mirari Conjecture, which we can do like third chapter of Mirari Conjecture, copy the sorcery. So we can do we can do 20 with third, third chapter of Mirari Conjecture, Fight with Fire. But yeah, Kefnet's going to be our main way to win. But I mean, the the win con is you just blow up all your opponent's lands, leave them with like not having any lands, and they can't play their spells, and then you eventually find Kefnet and you kill your opponent. Yeah, <laughs> opponent just conceding because they don't have any lands. That's that's our main win condition. Um, a blast zone is probably not bad. Hey, what's up, Papa Croft? Yeah, I don't I don't hate a blast zone. I think we could probably get a blast zone in here. Thank you so much for that sub there. I really appreciate that, Papa Croft. Thanks for that support. Blast zone will come in over a mountain. We could probably do that. All right, we're I'm in there. We got blast zone in here now too. Um. But anyway, yeah, like we're we're gonna be mostly just trying to stay alive. Uh, other other option that I was thinking about doing was Tails End. Uh, this I I definitely considered this like instead of like Crucible and and Shiv and Fire maybe playing like some Tails Ends and uh, trying to have the Tails End Lotus Field combo to ramp because you know like you you have your two mana that on turn three you play your Lotus Field use your two mana to counter the act the uh, triggered ability here so you don't have to sacrifice lands thought that was maybe a little too narrow though but that that was that's like where i originally started was like tails End, blood sun to go with the lotus fields and i've kind of just ended up with crucible of worlds we'll see how it uh 
how it uh, um, plays out there. Starman says, I watched my sub battle against you for pointers. I was playing the Sultai Flash. Yep. And there was one turn he said, don't let me untap. Cast it during your end step. My question is, is there a priority window to cast it after my ambusher trigger resolves? Yes. Yeah, because you just you just let your ambusher trigger, you know, just just you click on click on your end step to stop at your end step. And then, yeah, you just you let the ambusher trigger happen. You let it resolve. Um, and then you then you have priority again because you don't have to just immediately end the turn. You're still in the end step. And so then after after it resolves, or I mean, even even just whenever it's on the stack, maybe not when it's on the stack, maybe it checks, but yeah, let it resolve and then you're good. Um, but there we go. All right, let's give this a try. Let's see how this works. See if it does work. Maybe it won't. I just want to play some haphazard bit bar, man. It's been a while. But yeah, we got kind of a janky one here. We'll see how it works. Okay, it does check on the stack. So yeah, just just click like the priority thing for your end step and you can let it resolve and then and then cast stuff. Ooh, I need to get Deckmaster up. Like yeah, jank decks are great. Um, the Sultai Cavalier deck is probably going to still be, it'll probably be pretty good after rotation. It's not really losing much besides Llanowar Elf. Not much it can't replace. So I, I like where it's at. We, the thing is, is standard just always looks different after rotation. You know, like it's just, it's this way every single year of like certain certain uh you know cards decks interactions all that kind of stuff like look look to be in a good spot after rotation but then they print then then there's just other stuff in the in the fall set that uh either is doing what the the other uh, first thing is doing but better or um or shuts it down or things like that and it's just it's really hard to to say all right i'm just slowing the opponent down as much as i can i think that's that's my plan here you know i'm i'm we're a land destruction deck killing mana creatures is destroying lands i do not want them to get to like nissa you know in these other turns you know i'm slowing them down this living twister isn't going to do too much damage to me i'm not too worried about it the the biggest problem with Living Twister, though, that you have to realize when you're playing Star of Extinction, Star of Extinction is destroy target land, and then it does this. It has to target that land. If that land goes away before Star of Extinction resolves, Star of Extinction will fizzle. It is, it is a targeted removal spell. Okay. I definitely am getting a land. And then do I want... I don't want another Haphazard Bombardment, right? I think I probably just want the Shiv and Fire. Land, Shiv and Fire. I'm just going to grab... I guess we got plenty of good color, man. I guess I'll just grab this Field of Ruin. So how this says return a tapped land you control to its owner's hand, you do have to be careful because all they can just return whatever land you target with Star of Extinction back to their hand. So I want them to be tapped out. That would be the best possible thing.
Oh yeah, that's right. Sorry. Yeah, no, you're you're right. That that deck doesn't have Land of War. It has it has the Explore package that's all leaving. I'm sorry. That's whole tie deck that you were talking about. My apologies. Gosh, if it was just one turn earlier, if we were on the play. If we got to Star of Extinction here, that would be awesome. Eight. I guess like a blink of an eye, the Living Twister. I could go. I could go. Drawn from dreams, blink, Living Twister. What's up, kitty? I'm just going to hopefully get lucky and hit one of these two. That's what I'm doing here. Darn it. All right, well, I'm dead. The Living Twister was just such a problem because of how it shuts down Star of Extinction. I was just hoping to kill the, specifically kill that Living Twister. Because if I go bounce, if I go bounce there, they get to, the problem with, with going with the bounce line is like let's say I bounce like Living Twister, they get to replay Living Twister and then still like I'm sure they're gonna have the mana to just whatever land I starve extinction. They just put the land back in their hand and then I, I don't I get fizzle starve extinction. So I really need the Living Twister just to be dead, and so that's why I went with the haphazard bombardment and just tried to kill the Living Twister. Spyglass Twister. Gonna take out flame sweeps for Shiv and Fires to try to kill the land elves right away. Oh yeah, I guess I could target my own land. Alright, we're gonna need to find some cheap interaction. Yeah, yeah, we have treasure map as Kanta for ramp. But that's that's definitely the as you know, just like I talked about before. That's definitely the hardest part for our deck. Hardest thing for our deck. So the whole reason for melodies is is like Hydroid Crisis can get really big, you know. And but Hydroid Crisis is a really good card to steal. Land War Elf's not a bad card to be stealing either, though. So we're keeping this. Oh, I should have played Steam Vents. Should have played Steam Vents there. Um, I don't, uh, honestly, I don't know about Modern right now. I haven't played Modern in almost a year now. I don't, I don't know much about Modern.
right. I have Lanowar Elf. I don't need a shock there. See, now we have some ramp. Lanowar Elf ramp. That thing's so big. Definitely notice that, like, these... These blue-red... You know, every time I play against a blue-red deck, I get par I get played, like... It's like every single time. I, like, they put me against Cavalier Thorns, and it's just like, what... What the heck is this Cavalier of Thorns? Like, why does it have so much loyalty? What is this card? Like, or toughness, I guess. That's what I mean. Why does it have so much toughness? It's just so much toughness. I can't handle it. I wouldn't mind them playing Nissa here. Are you kidding me? Okay, at least they tapped out. Those Risen Reefs were just hitting land after land after land. There. Think of a Mardu enchantment control style deck with captive audience um stay back I'm it's an option hope it's not too hot for you i don't know i'd have to kind of see what's going on there I'm definitely taking Ascanta. I kind of I want to take this haphazard bombardment, but I really should just take the Caffeinet, I guess. Yeah, we got a rough pairing for our strip mine deck. The deck that's just built on putting in millions of lands into play. Is it just me? It's a rough pairing for us. Warm in here? Oh, I'm not even flipping Ascanta yet? Jeez. <laughs> I was gonna be able to like flip as Kanta, go fight with fire. But well, they have a negate anyway. Hey Nimbus Maids. Alright. That's kinda tough for us. Let's not, let's not face Cavalier of Thorns and Risen Reef. 
with our land destruction deck, please. It's possible this Mirarix conjecture is not worth it. Oh, did I just play against you, Juju? GG's. You had a lot of cards that were just perfect against me, like Living Twister, just shutting down my Star of Extinction. That card is really rough. going on here. Well, we can pretend our opponent played the Brineborn Cutthroat on my end step, and then I Lightning Strike it on my end step. They have, you have Late Line of Anticipation. What do you, just, just play your cards. Just play your cards, you're good. All right, you too. Hey, Nimbus Maids, going, going good today. We're trying out some fun jank here. So far, hasn't worked too well. Maybe I need like some, some like chromatic lantern type stuff. You know, just like some. Artifact mana rock, like instead of like Mirari Conjecture or Crucible. Like maybe. maybe that's what I need. I need. Because the real hard part is staying alive for Star of Extinction, like we've seen. I'm not revealing because I want to play Drawn from Dreams to hit land drops. Let's keep the basics in our deck for field. Oh, wait, I'm not even going to be able to field a rune or anything. They're just playing this mono blue thing. They do get to play all their stuff instant speed. They've just been playing everything sorcery speed. So we're going to put the Drawn from Dreams back in our hand next turn, and then the following turn, third chapter, we'll play like a copy Drawn from Dreams. That's always pretty sweet. <laughs> I, have, uh, I have the uh, invisible three mana a fairy that our opponent playing around. Makes sense. Down, down. 
One thing that Lotus Field and Field of Ruin, one thing that those do <clears throat> is they help you, they do help fill your graveyard for Escanta, which can be nice. Yeah, I think we're playing against a newer player here. We are going to be getting a lot of cards off of Drawn from Dreams. This next turn. I do need to kind of empty my hand. That's what I was doing there. Rude. Well, should I double star of extinction then? Three, four, five, eight. So I have eight mana. So this is, yeah, every instant and sorcery. Yeah, I could double star, blow up two lands. Or I double draw from dreams, plus have four mana to do other doubled stuff, like double lightning strike, double something else. I think I'm supposed to be double drawn from Dreamings. Let's grab an Ascanta and a blink of an eye. Or sorry, the uh, sorry, the star and a blink of an eye. Always need more stars. Can I have haphazard bombardments around here? All right, well we got a flame sweep and a. Uh... Treasure map. Hey, Sir Nom Nom. Sir Nom Nom with the sub. Y'all get those hype votes in the chat. Ah, <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, thanks thanks for the sub. Hope you in, are going to enjoy having access to all the, the emotes and everything. There you go. Yeah, Hapazard Bombardment. That's what I'm talking about. Now we're going. Let's lead with the treasure map. Maybe they counter treasure map. All right, now we're doing stuff. Is it land destruction? Or is it not? Hoping our opponent just plays a bunch more creatures. We'll just starve extinction next turn. Keep blowing up these lands. Looking for more haphazard bombardments. That's a good one. Do 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 do. All right, down to five lands. All right, so I know we're just playing against a, a beginning deck here, but it's still fun to, to be able to do our stuff.
Well, I would have kept that anyway. Yeah, more haphazard bombardments. Give me those. That one, that one, that one, and that one. So now all the lands <laughs> have haphazard bombardment triggers. Just blowed up two lands a turn. <laughs> Noxy, watch. Come on, Noxy. Don't. I need to use that language. But there we go. Yep, that's our win con. Blow up all the opponent's land and they scoop. This card's sweet. It just takes a while. So admittedly, it'll just take a while. I mean, I guess I'm supposed to be playing these fries. I wasn't going to sideboard, but then, you know, I saw the fries and it's like, uh, I guess we should be playing those. Hmm. Oh, if you get timed out, you get unmodded. That makes sense. I think that happened with somebody else that was a mod and and cursed like that, and I timed him out. And then they weren't mods anymore. I thought that, I thought maybe they were just upset and unmodded themselves. What are we doing here? Why am I taking so long to sideboard? Well, I tried to I tried to say mod you again, but it still just says you're modded, so Hey, what's up, Rex? Good afternoon. All right, our opponent did not want to face our haphazard bombardment shenanigans. I think it's better to keep this than go to five. I like the temple. Okay, we're in there. All right, and it looks like we are playing against Escape Shift deck. So we'll see if we have time to get to Star of Extinction or not. And Haphazard Bombardment and all that kind of stuff. Keeping the lands on top means that I don't have to like take lands withdrawn from dreams. They're a little fast. 
little fast for my Star of Extinction here. So if, you know, like they escape shift here and make a million creatures, be a little fast for me. I could have I could just could have just cast Draw from Dreams here to look for Flame Sweep. Maybe that's what I should have done. Maybe that's the safer thing. Jellyfish. Alright, I'm jelly. Hmm. I definitely want another one of these. Like, you know, I wanted Flame Sweep here. None of these are really doing anything for me, because I, I can't play as Kanta this next turn. I guess I just go grab another Drawn from Dreams. But I don't I don't have the mana to Drawn from Dreams plus Flame Sweep next turn. We just gotta hope no Scape Shift for a turn. Give me one turn of no Scape Shift here. I know my responsibility. Let's try this. Well, that's still not good. See, I'm always just a little slow. We're just one turn off again with uh, Star of Extinctioning. One turn off. Why can't this thing cost six mana, not seven? So we have, we're getting all the flame sweeps in now. So I only had two in. Now we have four. Uh, we'll get the Blood Suns. That does, of course, hurt, hurt Ascanta and Treasure Map. But if we flip those, like we don't have to flip Ascanta, for example. But just flipping Treasure Map gets us the more mana. I think Mirari Conjecture is probably just too slow, just in general. I, I'm kind of, I'm starting to think that that card just shouldn't be in my deck. If I have the Blood Suns, I probably don't need the Crucible. I guess I guess the Crucible can help if we don't have Blood Sun, though. Maybe Spyglass to Fairy. I know it means that we don't get to play instant. You know, to Fairy still means we don't get to play instant, but... If we Spyglass to Fairy, they don't get to bounce Blood Sun. And they don't get to instant speed their things. I need the blinks for the enchantments. The enchantments are kind of rough for us. Just just in general. Yeah, I decided to go with the negates. I was so I was thinking at first just to not go with the negates because of Little Teferi. But then at the end I decided to go for the negates, and obviously I guess I took too long with trying to go for the negates, and so no negates for us. And no sideboarding at all for us. That really hurts. I'm not going to scry yet. I think I want to play the Field of Ruin first here. So I can go Field of Ruin, get a blue source, and then with that blue source, scry with the treasure map.
So if they bounce... They bounce here, goes to one loyalty. Here goes nothing. Mine goes to one, then two, two, three, three. I've done the hero thing before. That didn't go according to plan. Just please no to ferry this turn. Don't get rid of my treasure map. This turn. Okay, good. All right, looking for a land. That's a land. Another land. I don't want that card. <laughs> All right, one field down. Noxie, with that resub. Thanks, Noxie. Welcome back. I appreciate that. Our third sub of the day. All right. Um... I think I'm probably just going to be casting the Drawn from Dreams here. I don't think I need to Starve Extinction again immediately. Yeah, it looks like they have they have Veil of Summer, right? Which is good for me. Veil of Summer isn't doing anything. I'm not countering anything or, or doing nothing. I mean, I guess I guess I have I guess I have Blink of an Eye just in my deck. So it's Kanta Mirari Conjecture. Definitely, yeah, Mirari Conjecture as Kanta. Lightning Strike, get that back. Atrian with the resub as well. Y'all keep these hype boats going. Thanks, Atrian. Sub number four on the day. There you go, Criticom. Diamond one. Oh man, you are so close. You got this. You got this.
Yeah, they are definitely holding up this Veil of Summer this whole time, which is doing nothing for them. All right, two feet of the dead's down. Cool, that bingo four mythic champ code works again now. Awesome, glad to hear. Hey, you hit tier one plat, that's, hey, nothing wrong with that, James, good job. That is very good as well. Unfortunately, with this life gain they've had from the two crises, I don't get to kill them with fight with fire here. I think I'm still just going to double kick fight with fire. Or I could do double star... So if I double star here, could open myself up to escape shift though. Uh, you know, could blow up like the memorial and something else. I mean, I could just go the really weak way of just lightning strike this crisis and not take advantage of getting the double. Honestly, that's probably that's actually just the best thing for me to be doing. Because then I get to play as Kanta, like just play as Kanta and Kefnet here is is the best thing for me to be doing. Honestly, I'm sure, I'm not really taking advantage of Mirari conjectures. Third chapter, but it's worth it. Because otherwise, if I go if I go double kick fight with fire, I kill. Crisis and do 14 to them. And it's just like, what's that 14 really doing? But getting these two in plays, this is the way to go. Right on schedule. I guess that was the reason not to use Lightning Strike, is now they have Don't Teferi worry. that can instant speed you. escape shift, and that's trouble. They just want to keep this Veil of Summer up all the time. Expecting it to do something. Let's go library here. I still have seven mana after act activating as Kanta. Well, you know me, I want to do Haphazard Bombardment. But it's probably smarter to grab the Lightning Strike and kill the Teferi. Yeah, it's just it's just smarter to do that. This is hardly my worst defeat. Well, credit com, if you think if you think we're not getting enough XP from like the guild event and stuff. Remember before the system before we were getting three packs, three free packs every single week. And we are definitely getting more than that, even with the just the free part of 
crushing canopy? Even if you think just the free parts of the mastery pass, you're you're getting better rewards than what we were before. So there's there's not really a reason to complain about the rewards. Yeah, crushing canopy got me. Alright, well that's all the Hydra Crisis is. Thing is, they haven't used Escape Shift yet, and if I use the Star of Extinction, then they... I guess I could just get to kick Fight with Fire, though. Yeah, I can just do that. I can just kick Fight with Fire. I have 40 cards left. My opponent has 25 cards left. Uh oh. I could be dead. Shifting Ceratops is really scary. Well, I think I can win this if my opponent doesn't just have a bunch of haste creatures like this. Haste creatures are... I don't... I'm not going to beat haste creatures. But if it wasn't haste creatures, I could... I could win. I think opponent has too many cards. Well, so many of their cards don't matter. Like, that doesn't... It doesn't matter they have a lot of cards. It's, it's really if they have, like, another Shifting Ceratops, a Haste creature. Or if they have, like, Little Teferi give them instant speed, a bunch of zombies. Um, yeah, Ceratops. I, I was very confident in winning this until Ceratops. Ceratops is very scary. All right, so give me this. And all right, so flame sweep means I'm kind of protected against instant speed zombies. So it's really like ceratops. Instant speed creature is how my opponent's going to beat me. There you have the haste. Oh, that's true. If they have instant speed zombies, they would have had to ferry, so Flame Sweep doesn't help as much, but... <clears throat> Ceratops. That's really disappointing. I thought we were, like, really safe, honestly. Like, whenever I killed all the Krasises, I was basically thinking that we were safe and we were going to be winning that. Um, but, yeah, Ceratops with Haste. I That's... Haste is very good. All right, so I think Mirari Conjecture... I don't think Mirari Conjecture is worth it. I want... Um, what's the card that I want? That's the one I want. Araska Relic. I want an Araska Relic in here to to help ramp just a little bit. You know, I don't. It's not like something that I want a bunch of. But I think I want that over the fourth treasure map. It's a mana rock. It helps give me to seven, and I can gain life with it later.
Darn. <clears throat> Our is it land destruction? We lost to the scape shift deck. We had it. I th really think we had him cut. Like so, game one. You know, we we're our hand was a little slow on the uh, there on game one, and we needed one more turn. You know, like we had like the double star of extinction, but we had six mana. The turn that we died, we died on turn six. Um, we needed one more turn there, and then uh, game two. You know, we just blew up the third field of the dead. Uh, we had Ascanta active plus eight other mana. I was feeling really good about it. We we're about to start dropping bat bombardment and and Kefnet and stuff. I was feeling good about it, but then hey, Ceratops, hey, Ceratops. Back to back, you know, we're at ten. Back to back, hey, Ceratops, we're dead. I also didn't. So like the other thing about that match, of course, uh, as you saw there, I didn't actually sideboard, and I'm. That that hurt us, of course. Um, but I I took too long to sideboard, and that's admittedly that's my bad. I uh, you know you only have like two minutes to sideboard, and you know I was talking and thinking and everything, and I took too long. You know that's the thing. I I play so many different decks all the time, play new decks a lot, and um, and uh, yeah. It it happens, and so that was certainly a reason why we lost that match. Also, was not not sideboarding. That definitely hurt. But uh, I guess what I, one thing I learned about that match that I didn't know before uh, playing, I really didn't. I didn't know that they were going to be playing a bunch of Ceratops. I had I've never seen Ceratops from their deck playing against their deck before. Maybe I just don't play the decks where. You want Ceratops too much? I don't know. Like, you know, yesterday we played Grixis Control and we played against a bunch of Scape Shift with Grixis Control, and that's like the kind of matchup where you'd think that if my opponents would have Ceratops, they would be bringing them in and went through like all of our. We, you know, we just never saw Ceratops. But I guess if if that's something they're going to be playing, we're going to want the Shivan Fires. We want to keep those in in the deck, you know, to be able to have the instant speed removal there for damage. That's something we could have, but was not expecting that. That and like the the crushing canopy certainly hurt, because the crushing canopy dealt you know it killed my Kefnet and got to do some damage there, and then you know not having Kefnet out slowed us down. So there we go. You'd add in a compass. I don't hate compass. It's up, Sabino. Is Compass better than Araska Relic? The thing is, like, Compass flips whenever you have seven lands already, and that's that's the thing is, like, we need to help get to seven lands. So that's why I don't think that playing Compass over Treasure Map really helps, because it's 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 the get to seven mana part to start casting Star of Extinction. That's kind of the the tough part there. Um, but thank you so much there, Sabino. I really appreciate that. You think Geode is better than Relic? Mana Geode. When it enters the battlefield, scry one. So would we rather scry? Interesting. It could be. Would we rather scry or be able to gain three life, draw a card after we already have like ten lands in play? So it's like, so it's basically like after we've already won, then it, or like, you know, after we've already really stabilized and are, we're doing really well, then we get to do that other part or we get the scry one right away. Honestly, you're probably right. The scry one right away is probably more valuable. Because we can only do this life gain thing after we already have like 10 lands in play, basically. Or maybe a flipped treasure map with seven lands. And that's like the only time we'd, we'd want to do it anyway. Our deck can use so much mana, maybe we just never really even want to do this ability anyway. You're, you're probably right, Mana Geode's probably going to be better for this specific deck. A lot of the times I like the Relic more, but I, I think for this one, I can see that. I think, I, I think I'm kind of with you with the Mana Geode there. 
yeah, it is colored mana too. I'm not sure how much that will matter too much, but it, it's not nothing. You know, like you get mana of any color. That's not nothing. That's for sure. So cool. All right. So that's our is it land destruction deck. Um, uh, yeah, didn't didn't have necessarily like the best showing, but you know we weren't expecting it to. You know this is a pretty janky one, um, but I think I it's it's unfortunate that we lost the scape shift deck, but we can kind of see why. Um, but I think like that we have a, a good win percentage going forward against it. Just got to dodge those shifting those hasty shifting ceratops. Just got to dodge that, <laughs> and also have to sideboard. I didn't sideboard at all. That didn't help me. Um, but yeah, Haphazard Bombardment, still a fun card. We didn't get to play it too much, but this is a fun card. This kind of deck that we're playing here, also if you're like thinking like, why, why would you want to play this deck? Not only like, I think, you know, this is something that would be fun to play against Scapeshift. Um, but like Esper Control, I think this is a, I think Esper Control is going to really struggle against a deck like this, like where they all their removal spells aren't doing too much. And you're just playing a bunch of Star of Extinctions. It depends on like how much counter magic that the Esper Control deck's going, if they're back into playing a bunch of counter magic or not. But if they're not, um, the Bard Mid Star of Extinction, pretty good cards there. Anyway, that's Is It Land Destruction. Um, build it around Haphazard Ben Bard Mint. So if you're watching the video later on YouTube, hope you enjoy the deck. And uh, if so, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. But that's it here for our land destruction deck. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you for the next video.